I got an unpopular opinion for you guys. I think spring right now, as to when I'm speaking, early April, it's the worst time of the year, hands down. There's no sports going on, which is the main reason. There's nothing at all to watch. There's pollen everywhere. You can't go outside without getting your allergies up and you gotta start cutting grass. And it's also too early to start getting in pools. The water's way too cold. I straight up hate this time of the year, and I'm not gonna lie, the main reason is because there's nothing going on. There's nothing to talk about, there's no sports. What am I supposed to do with my life? I'm a simple man. I like working out, going to the gym, I like steak, and I like sports, that's it. That's all I need in this life to be happy. And I I'm very curious. Let me know in the comment section. What are you doing in your spare time? What are you watching? Regardless of all that nonsense and jibber jabber, I have brought you guys here today to talk about the reality of college football in 2023. And here's the terrifying part about this. Depending on where you stand on things, this can either be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. I think a lot of people are going to like this reality, and I think a lot of other people are not going to like this reality. There's not going to be any fence sitters. There's no in-betweens. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. I know what you're sitting there saying. Yo, Matt, what in the crap are you talking about? And well... That's a great question. I just say we get straight into it. You already know if you're new to the channel and you like football content, sports content, anything like this, consider joining our amazing community. We are super close at 270,000 subscribers. And yeah, don't be a loser. Consider joining and all that corny stuff. All right, bye, bye, bye. Sure, grab up. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. So let me ask you a question. Who's the best conference in all college football? Dun, 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 dun. All right, all right, all right. We all know what you said, the SEC. Even if you hate the SEC, deep down in your heart, the first thing that came to your mind is SEC, plain and simple. If the SEC wasn't the first thing that came to your mind, you need to get checked out. But anyways, continuing along here, SEC, the past 15 to 20 years, the SEC has dominated the sport. Yada, 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 you already know that. I'm not gonna sit up here and praise the SEC. But what I am gonna do is ask you another question. Why has the SEC been so good recently? Why have they been so dominant the past 15 to 20 years? What is the one school? What is the one team that when you turn on ESPN, college football, game day, college football live, they talk about and they say, oh, well, they carry the SEC, Alabama. Am I right or am I right? Anytime anyone chants SEC, SEC, all the haters, they go, oh, well, if it wasn't for Alabama, y'all wouldn't be the top conference. And it's not just to a certain extent, but to say if Alabama wasn't in the SEC, the SEC wouldn't be the most dominating conference, it's 100% facts. Since 2009, Alabama has won six of the national championships. Alabama has carried the SEC year in and year out. They've been the most consistent team. Sure, here and there over the years, we saw Florida go on their mini run. We saw Auburn and they went on a run. We saw LSU, they won a title, but they were all one-hit wonders. I say all that to say this. I remember around 2016, 2017, when all these college football fans around me and just everywhere in general was going, man, I can't wait for Nick Saban to retire, and I can't wait for the day that Alabama finally falls off. I'm tired of them. Because it seemed like there for a while, Alabama was completely taking the fun out of the sport. They wasn't just beating teams, they was dominating teams. It was bad. Now Alabama, yes, they are still one of the best teams in the country, but they're nowhere close to what they used to be. Getting back to what I was saying though, I remember everybody going, man, I can't wait for Alabama to fall off. I'm tired of them dominating the sport. We need somebody else to come in and take over. Everybody outside the SEC was tired of seeing Alabama win because that means the SEC was winning. Although the SEC teams, you were getting beat up by Alabama, you could still at the end of the day go, hey, at least our conference won the title. There was that certain pride and joy about it. And if you're an SEC fan, you know what I'm talking about. But fast forward in time into 2023, our current date and time, Alabama has not fallen off by any stretch of the imagination and here's where things really and i mean really start to get interesting there's five power five conferences and i'm gonna tell you how i feel about them and their shot to win a title in this upcoming season we'll start with the pac-12 although i don't think the pac-12 is the worst conference i got them as the third best they have absolutely no shot of winning the title next season they're too soft sure they can go 10 and 2 and compete for a new year six bowl but they can't compete with the Alabamas and Georgias of the world. They just can't. Too soft. We saw it last year against Georgia, and we saw what happened when USC played Utah. If you think Utah's physical, <laughs> yeah, play Georgia. That's all I'm going to say about that. The Pac-12, I think they're a decent conference. They're on the come up, but they're not ready for title contention. So now we're down to four conferences. Let's take a look at the ACC, which I believe is the worst conference in the country. The only difference with the ACC from the past 15 years is now your top dog, Clemson, has gotten worse. Can Clemson win a title next year? Heck to the note. Dabo Sweeney's stuck in 2015 still. He's got to change his ways. Do I think he's going to change his ways? No. He hasn't done it in the past two years. Why am I going to think he's going to do it next year? The ACC is 
is an absolute joke. You put South Carolina in the ACC, they probably win it every single season. That now leaves us with three conferences left. The Big Ten, the Big 12, and the SEC. We'll take a look at the Big 12. Their best team, right? Their best team lost to Georgia by 58. Pretty embarrassing, right? I don't even got to say anything more. And your second best team, Kansas State, got blown out by Alabama. Keep in mind, this Alabama team last year was embarrassing and pitiful at times, and they blown out your second best team. The only team, and I mean the only team that I would even say has the slightest shot of winning a title in the Big 12 anytime soon, and I mean really next year, is Texas. Why is that? Because Texas, they have dudes. They can recruit with the SEC schools and they can beat them. But here's the thing with Texas. You got Steve Sarkeesian running the show. You got the good old Sartnado calling the shots. I think Steve Sarkeesian, Sartnado, AKA, he is one of the, if not the best offensive coordinators in the country, but he's not an offensive coordinator. He's a head coach. Things have changed. When it comes to his head coaching abilities, well, I mean, look at what happened at Washington and look at what happened at Texas last year. Not too impressive. Texas isn't no title contender. They're not back and they're not going to be back anytime soon. Mark it down. We've seen this story before. Until Texas can beat the teams they're supposed to beat, I'm never going to take them seriously. Okay, sure, you almost beat Alabama, but keyword almost. What about the teams you should have beat last year? You couldn't beat them. And I've given Texas credit for how they played against Alabama. It was unreal, and they should have won the game if Quinn Ewers didn't get hurt. More than likely, they do win the game. But the bottom line is, even if you win that game, you're not winning the title. And I'm not going to talk about Oklahoma too much because they have no shot of winning a title next year. They're still in rebuild mode. So the Big 12 isn't too serious of a threat, I'd say, to Georgia, Alabama, or the rest of the SEC, right? I mean, we can agree on that. And plus, the Big 12 is losing Oklahoma and Texas, two of the teams that can actually compete with the SEC. And well, 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 that now leads us down to one conference left. The Big Ten. Y'all know how I feel about the overrated and sorry Big Ten. They got two great teams. I'll say it. They're great. Ohio State and Michigan. Well, I want you to think about this. Ohio State was arguably the most talented team in the country, not just last year, but the year before, and they couldn't even beat Michigan. Ohio State had all the talent in the world the past couple of years, and they couldn't win a championship. So why am I going to believe they're going to win one next year with no quarterback? Okay, you got Marvin Harrison Jr. I'll give you credit, but you had him last year. Ohio State's a joke. You got to beat Michigan, and then we'll talk. As far as it goes for Michigan, well, unfortunately, yeah, you upset Ohio State, but your recruiting class that just happened in 2023 is ranked 17th in the country. You don't have five-star recruits. I don't know what it is about Michigan. They can't put it together. They can't recruit with Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State. They can't do it. And yes, you may upset Ohio State, but when it comes to making a playoff run, you're not going to be able to beat Georgia and Alabama without five stars. It is what it is. Anybody that played sports or coached sports, you know this. you got to have dudes at the end of the day. The bottom line is Michigan doesn't have dudes. You may upset Ohio State, but you will not even sniff a title if you don't get some five-star recruits in there. That is the bottom line, straight up. And I know Ohio State fans are going to bring this up. Oh, Matt, well, we was a field goal away from beating Georgia. How do I say this nicely? I want to engrave this in your head. You lost. You lost the game. Ron Day can't win the big game. He can't win any big time game. He just can't. And now you're losing one of the best quarterbacks you ever had in CJ Stroud. So why should I believe you're going to beat Michigan? Ohio State fans, listen here, little bro. You beat Michigan and then we'll talk. That's it. You shouldn't even got in the playoff last year, but that's a different conversation for a different day. So in conclusion, I don't know if I made this clear or not. Do I think Ohio State or Michigan can win a title? No, I'm not even sold on the fact that Ohio State can beat Michigan. They should beat them, but they have in the past two years. And I'm not sold on the fact that Michigan can win three big-time games back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. And when I say big-time games, I'm talking about the Big Ten Championship and then two playoff games. They're not talented enough. It is as simple as that. And these things are a little easier to predict than March Madness. Because I know somebody's going to say, Oh, Matt, well, what about upsets? We said that happened in March Madness. We just saw it happen. And yes, we did. But March Madness, completely different sport. In basketball, you're talking about if one player gets hot and the other team's not hitting shots, you can see one of the biggest upsets of all time. But in college football, if you don't have five-star recruits, you're not winning a title. And remember, that's what we're talking about, winning a title. You may see a Penn State upset Ohio State or Michigan but they're not going to win a title. And we'll go as far as to saying this, even in college basketball, when you see these upsets, still, who winds up winning the national title? A top four or five seed. There's way more parity in college basketball, way more, but when it comes to title talk, 
not much of a difference at all. UConn's won five titles in the past 20 something years. Kentucky's won a bunch, North Carolina, Kansas. It's still always the same old teams. Same thing with college football, and I saved the best for last. You know how to do it. Let's talk about the SEC and the main reason I'm making this video. I know what you're sitting there saying. Yo, man, why have I watched this video? What is this terrifying reality of college football? And I'm about to explain it to you. What did we say at the beginning of the video? Everybody's going, oh, I'm tired of Alabama. I'm tired of SEC being on top. I can't wait for Alabama to fall off and blah, 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 blah. Like I stated earlier, we're now in 2023 and Alabama has yet to fall off. But not only that, a new powerhouse, a new team that many people think is going to overtake Alabama in a few years, Georgia has a what's the word I'm looking for? Arisen? Arisen? They have arose. No, that ain't a word. You get what I'm trying to say. Georgia has risen up. Does that go together? It doesn't sound right, but what, whatever. Matt, just get a move on. Georgia is now on that Alabama level. They're on that status. They have a top two head coach in the game. The best two coaches in all college football, Kirby Smart and Nick Saban. It's right there, boom, check mark. One of the best coaches in the country. But here's the other thing we got to talk about. They both have a lot, and I mean a lot of five-star recruits. Alabama just got the best recruiting class in history recently, and Georgia, well, they're Georgia. They always get a ton of five stars. Alabama and Georgia, when you break it down, they're not too different. They have great coaching, and they have great players. They have dudes. So I want you to think about this. What did it take to stop Alabama from winning a title two years ago? A same team in its own conference. So now as to where it stands, okay, if you want to try to argue and say Alabama is falling off or they're at the end of their dynasty, well, a new one's starting. Well, dang, that kind of sucks if you're not an SEC fan. But hold on, hold on. There's more. A lot of people are failing to realize this. When everybody talks about the two best teams in the country, you talk about Alabama and Georgia, or at least the two best teams in the SEC. But many people are failing to mention good old Rocky Top, Tennessee. They're on the come up, and so is LSU and Brian Kelly. Ladies and gentlemen, do not sleep on Tennessee and LSU. They are on the come up. Josh Heupel, what he did last year, unreal considering how piss poor of a circumstance it was when he took over Tennessee. And same thing for LSU and Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly and Josh Heupel did outstanding jobs because when they took over that job at LSU and Tennessee, a bunch of players left. And here's the scary part for the rest of the country. Tennessee and LSU can recruit with Alabama and Georgia. The only problem with LSU the past few years, it hasn't been talent, it's been coaching. I tried telling people before the season, Brian Kelly is an outstanding head coach, but he's not going to win a title at Notre Dame because he doesn't have dudes. What do you know? He goes to LSU in one year, one rebuilding year, he beat Nick Saban. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. You get Brian Kelly some four and five star recruits everywhere lined up on the field, this man could win a title within the next five to six years. And it's the same thing for Josh Heupel. Look at who beat Tennessee last year. Who was the first team to beat him? Georgia. And after that game, did Tennessee hit some bumps in the road? Yes, they did. But here's what gets me so excited, especially for this upcoming season. Tennessee, LSU, and Georgia. All three of those teams, they can beat Alabama. On the flip side, Tennessee, LSU, and Alabama, all three of those teams, they can beat Georgia. And what I'm referring to is year in and year out. Theoretically speaking, is Ole Miss going to upset Alabama and Georgia maybe once every 15 to 20 years? Yes, they are. But I'm talking about year in and year out. All four of these teams I just named off, LSU, Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia, they have the talent and the coaching to win a title next season. And ladies and gentlemen, those four teams are all in one conference. And also another scary sight is, okay, if you want to say Alabama's falling off, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But LSU, second year head coach. Tennessee, they got Josh Heupel. He's pretty young and Kirby Smart's just getting started. You may get your wish in hoping and praying that the Alabama dynasty is falling off, but be careful for what you wish for because two or three others might begin. You can't show me four other teams in any other conference that could potentially win a title next year. You can't even show me two. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say Ohio State could win a title next year. Well, that's only one. Let's say Clemson could out of the ACC. That's only one. The Big 12, I guess you'd say Texas. That's only one. And then you got the Pac-12. Well, nobody. The SEC has four, and Tennessee and LSU are only going to get better every single season. The only reason Tennessee has been complete trash the past 15 years is because of coaching. Well, now they found their guy. The only reason LSU has been up and down the past 15 years is because of coaching. Well, now they found their guy. I want you to think about this. <laughs> if LSU could win a title with Ed Ogeron, who didn't even know what he was doing out there, he's just screaming, go Tigers. What do you think they can do with Brian Kelly? Look, man, the SEC isn't going to slow down when Alabama slows down because eventually Alabama is going to fall off and Nick Saban's going to retire. 
If anything, the SEC is getting stronger. And you know what that means for the rest of the sport? Parity is going to get even smaller than what it already is, and people are complaining about that. You think parity is bad right now with Alabama and Georgia going back to back to back? Well, what do you think is going to happen when LSU and Tennessee get good? And hey, eventually Florida is going to put it back together now. Don't forget that. It's definitely something to think about. Let me know your thoughts down below. But uh, right with me.